Okay. All right, this is way being exploration into excess and the new keyword API, primarily. So, so we spend, so expect uh, pro macros and other goodness from the internals. Fine. Excellent. So, so, um, this is my aspiration into creating the next generation of QW. What? The next generation of QW. Ah. Because every so often, I, I do a lot online, and every so often, the question comes up, why doesn't QW interpolate? Why can't you stick in QW foo dollar bar? Mm -hmm. Well, this is the answer to that. Uh, the code is up on GitHub under Dr. Ford in my account. It's not quite working yet, but the idea is there. Um, we have Q, we have uh, Q and QQ. The code and null code operators and QW. Well, why don't we have a QQW? No good reason. We will after this is finished. Yeah. The, idea being, the idea being the possible to squish, but to be able to interpolate last and first names into your QW list. <coughs> now, of course, this is redundant. You can always use dollar first, comma, dollar last, comma, quote, goth, etc. And if dollar last contains spaces, it will be a single entry in that name. Uh, if Dora if Dora last contains yes, the the QW or rather the element of the variable has spaces. If the variable name or sorry the variable kind has spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just to remind you, and for those of you that don't know how deep parse works or how to actually look at what Perl does. Um, this is how <coughs> it works on. This is how, rather, this is how Perl internally views your string after it's gone through the first layer of lexing. So the phrase our name equal Q parent, Q parent, gets automatically translated back into the single quotes. Likewise, with QQ, the same after curves. Single quotes on both sides. Um, if you are not aware, um, ordinarily you do need to do one thing to get the output to work correctly. And that's past the dash Q flag into the parse. So it will probably reveal the quotes here, which is how Perl does this internally. Otherwise, you get this, otherwise, it looks like the same. It will look like bar name equal Q parent in your parse output. So that's a small trick to think of. Um, and same thing inside, uh, the, same, the same way inside um, Q parent acts the same way. This was more of a bigger response way for repeating entries. Um, yeah. That's not dollar x. Right. Uh, because I wish for many things to fit on the Otherwise, since you, I didn't know if it would run off the edge. So I'm sure it's not quite, not quite one to one representation there. And I apologize, but did have room on the slide. So that's Q and QQ. So looking at QW and QQW, here's how it will work. Here's how QW right now operates. You need the dash P in order to see the parentheses when you look at your parse output. And the dash Q to see the single quotes around the entries. Otherwise, you get back what you have in the world. Likewise, what I expect to see after likewise, what, I, what I expect to see after using the QQW operator is analogous to this with um, the quotes removed. 
So the list looks exactly the same as if you were doing normal list manipulations, and it will work with map, it will work with rep, it will work passing into functions, it will work as a L value, it will work as it will work as a array slice. The idea being to exactly emulate how the current QW operator works. Question. Yeah. Will it handle other um, delimiters, like instead of parentheses? Glad you asked that. And in fact, I have test. I have a test week coming up that uh, shows it behaving. That it, that shows how it behaves. <coughs> and next slide again. A little bit of a review here before we get into the really good stuff. And how operating on arrays. And again, the dash p and dash q flags needed for the parents and her from the name. And this time, though, this and this are the same name. The same name. So, um, does everyone have a good feel for how it will eventually behave? Um, just a fairly quick synopsis how the Q, Q, W operator will work. What's that like? This is how it works on the inside. Um, this heavily relies on uh, function, heavily relies on a very stripped down version of function double code parameters, which is going to be again. Uh, what function double code parameters does is lets you, as part of a subroutine, declare a C style prototype. So you can say sub foo parent dollar x comma dollar y close parent and have dollar x and dollar y be directly allocating the code. And this uses the keyword API, as does this code. The last C not a space should probably include new lines and taps. It it does actually. The actual the actual code does I am eliminating things for clarity. There, there are in fact, um, there are in fact, uh, Lex, uh, what is it, um, Lex free space calls in between these entries. So, yes, that, that's a good catch. Uh, the Axe source does have these, but I have to eliminate those to fit you know, on what's written. Okay. But still, but still thanks. Someone actually watching code. I, I have one QQ nuisance, okay. which happens to me all the time, and maybe there's a solution for that. Then you have 10 words which don't have any spaces, and you use Q, uh, QW, mm -hmm. uh, so QW nuisance, and then right. you get an 11th, and that breaks it all. So, and then you rewrite it, maybe in the middle. And <coughs> so, if you could put quotes around one in the middle, mm. just to preserve the space, that would be very nice. Mm. And that will be QQQW. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's going to use W slash E for that extra label value. Yeah. Right yeah. Can you use backslash? Right then, put in C. No, I don't. I just tried. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good point. It was a good point. Okay, so um, now we're going to delve into the actual implication of this, uh, how this works. Uh, for those of you that aren't for those of you that aren't familiar too much with the licensing process, it's more like um, a red expression. You walk on spring until you find the content that you want to start happening. Which is what this code here does. We assume that uh, the code has already, that the curl has already eaten up the QQW, and we do some magic, which we'll talk about later on, to find to read the start race. So this is all eaten up already by Perl, consumed by that, as part of the callback feature. Uh, the function called the keyword API callback uh, essentially you pass the a uh, keyword such as QQW in our case, or uh, fun, or in the case of function printers. And the Perl API will work for that keyword in the spring. And at that point, it will jump out into your code and let you handle all of the parsing and lexing. And then when you're done with that, you return to where 
you return the string, or sorry, you return the mark to Perl and go on with your <coughs> Perl return to its processing. So to reiterate, we've already gone through the Q, Q, W keyword and code previous to this has parsed out the public brand and parsed out the white space, as mentioned. And we are sitting here at the keyword at the first letter F, where we start our own parsing. The first thing to know is that internally uh, characters, obviously we are now in a Unicode world, thankfully, and internally Unicode letters are, of course, very large, thanks to, say, Chinese and Japanese and Malay and Thai, with their tens of thousands of glyphs. So we have to represent those as 32-bit integers. And that is what the type I32 here represents. I32 for the integer, 32 bits, and then C shorthand for character. Functions such as uh, LexPeak, Unicare, and SV, CAP, QP, and these are all curl interpreters, all part of the, the macro layer of curl. We're sending out into C code, so we have left curl behind and now it's sending into the C implementation. The zero here uh, lets us peak to the let's just peak to the next character because one thing that you cannot do is you cannot you cannot push characters back on the stack. I e once you have read past the F, you cannot tell Pearl to go backwards. Well, you may be able to, but I haven't found the API and haven't had DT tests. So when so the answer is instead the answer is instead of reading ahead and then throwing away. The answer is to peek one character ahead, or two characters ahead. In the case of uh, zero, one, zero, peek further into the screen, and then decide to handle or not handle. So that's how we get around some of the possible issues of having to retain a stack. First, if we peek down too, if we read down too far and can't go back. So you have to maintain stack, you have to maintain any internal state. So the so now we are trying, so at this point we are at the first and high scan until the end of the What you do not see as code is we have already found this opening parent and through and our C code says that for opening parents, the matching delimiter will be a clothing parent. This handles some of the annoying, some of the not annoying, how can I politely interesting cases that you run into with QQ and Q and simple And yes, my test suite does handle those cases with one exception. So we search for either the end spring, which is minus one, or the end limiter. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't, I haven't read this code in a while. If we do not have our end limiter, and no, this does not handle uh, nest limiters, that's coming up. <coughs> or white space, so you just get across the <coughs> Then we take then uh, we start by and we read our F and then attach the then attach F which is the here I'll be just speak F onto an existing um, on an existing SV uh, scalar value. So we're building up a scalar value of the string. Uh, string F, and then next pass we keep getting in at the string to move to the next stage and pass through the loop until we get to a white space. At which point we leave the loop and the cat and the 
uh, S and the SV here is complete. I, can, I can't tell if I lose people yet or not. Um, this is cool. As I hope that the um, so now part of the, the fun part of this is taking our the SVs that we have built up into the rate and adding those in, adding those to the to the operating. Which if you're not again familiar with curly tools, and I'm not, <laughs> I just managed to have my total works. Um, the operation spree is a is a belt, sorry, is a day structure that Pearl keeps internally uh, what's happening within the company. It is a different representation and is how it internally compiles the code. So what we have to do is instead of giving instead of giving it a the literal text gives you the we have to turn that into a pearl code as an operator. And there are some issues with this. There's actually one issue with the limbers, but I'll take care of that later on. I don't know if you have time. Why do you make a copy of the SV instead of uh, pushing the SV and creating a new SV for the next one? Um, I think I do that right. I think the code does that. Um, I been what is on GitHub is plain consistently, and this is an overcopy. I may have done that. Um, I, I know that there is a push SV. I think what I did was um, start out with creating an SV and then pushing onto the SV, push, creating the SV list off. And then pushing onto the uh, SV list of the different uh, SVs, if that makes sense. Both is possible. Possible. Okay, so my approach may not be sound there. Uh oh. Minor nitpick. This is, probably, this is probably okay in the code, but you're breaking UTF 8 there. Mm. You're not passing the proper flag. Okay. Um, uh. Uh, which one? Because you're passing just uh, the, the content of the scalar, but you're not passing whether it's marked as UTF-8 or not. That's why I asked, can you ah. push the scalar onto the object stack? Yeah. Which is so, ah. way, way okay. more easy. I, I follow. Oh. But it might just be the example code. Alright. Um, I don't, the test we doesn't yet encompass uh, UTF-8, and I'll probably run into that problem when I do. And at that point, um, I'm guessing that uh, so your word rates to care of uh, oh, uh, that zero at the end. Would yeah, be zero like at it. the end will be the SVP five. Yeah, exactly. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew I was missing something. Actually, this is why I come to conferences to get people fresh and fresh. And find your bugs. Absolutely, thank you. All right. All right. That, that's why I did that, and then later on call me. And they want to call it pin. So does that make more sense? For create and then append later on, as well as to push onto the entry. But since us as I people that know more about this might apparently, um, uh, append again we're trying to append to a list that we create of the variable. So we have first and last. We're trying to pin the virtual the where we're spraying last onto the end of the SV PV list to pass this up tree back to Pearl in order to get it to parse that correctly. And again, uh, uh, zero that will cause problems with, uh, with, with UTF-8, which is a shame because when it talks on UTF-8. <laughs> Oops. Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, that explains why the word length is necessary because of count. That makes sense. Okay, sorry. Um, and I don't have any fancy diagram for this, but this is essentially taking our original, um, the original operation which we have here, 
and tacking on to the end of, of that as a classic linking list, if you will. Linking list, we have the first SVP. We have the first SV over here that we create representing the first, the, the word first in our text. And down this and pass through here. We have the next SV on top on to the end of that. Moving on my moving on myself. Let's see where I am on this. Oh. Right. right. I'm trying to remember what I was doing. I can't make super team calls in there. What's that? No ships in there. Huh. Oh. Um, I, I did capture that actually. Um, again, is again I ran space on the slide. If you look again, I believe Emerson is on GitHub. Um, I also think that I had not yet decided what to do with the Emerson, i.e., whether that evaluated once and pass the contents the list, or let it evaluate multiple times. I see special purpose for constants. Mm. Adding constants to the QQ. Mm. That, that could be interesting. Mm -hmm. All good ideas. All good ideas. It's for next year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll just come down next year with the same talk. Yeah. I'll be a little bit there. Um, I just actually run the slide just ahead. Yeah. Um, but again, we'll watch the end here. And this time, when we end the other range, there's text beyond the end slide here, if you will. But this is like for these dollar sign. And I have, I believe, I've taken care of this on GitHub. Again, this is the code's a little bit outdated. But uh, this is how the only way that I found, at least looking at the current Perl source, uh, how it does the actual scalar variable as opposed to a scalar string or a or a sign. I have I think right now uh, the code does something just with dollar sign because I haven't yet to decide how I mean it deals with the S sign in terms of the internals. Because I I really can't think I, I really can't think of a use case for wanting to add interpolate a percent hash variable, but I'm sure someone here would. <laughs> yeah. So by leaving that as <laughs> I'm sure someone come up with a with the real valid reason for that. So I think what I will do, I think I will let someone else come up with the use case and then fill that back in when I have the rest of it. And here also is the uh, read space. It's not just looking for, for for a single space, which also was a bug in the, in the slide because it should look for because the attach should be not for white space, but for um, Perl, for actual white space, as in tabs and new lines and white space. And not for any white space, and you have white space, and thin white space, and if I get that there, if I, pardon? White space. All of these have eight plus white space. Yeah, all those oh, fun things. Like that. No. <laughs> yeah, all those fun was hiding around what um, FFT zero. Okay, that way. It's embarrassing to actually build a code point. But um, but for for those of you that were wondering about the dungeons, here are the cases that I have right now. Um, they say QQW bang bang. These two pass. Open brace, close brace. Close brace, close parent, close parent. One in one cases. Uh, this is not quite done, but we'll be able to get back to pressing. This fun one, <laughs> because it actually works with the pure, pure QW. You have to say QW space, W, W. It will use W as the loopers. Yeah, if you use a space yeah. and any character, the next character is the delimiter. Yeah. yeah. Right, so it handles nulls. 
UQQW and an L character. Just to make your life a bit of more hell. Because <laughs> that works at QQ. No, not right now. I do want to do though. Yeah. What do I do want to do with that? You have to new line. what I do want to do with that, um, in keeping with my next talk on um on uh, you know, I do want to add the ability to use uh Guillemot, the uh, fans, the uh, French double the French double yeah, yeah, yeah. add that and um, in the interest of completeness, look through the rest of the Unicode character set, at least for Unicode 5, and find those balancing characters, use those as well, just for completeness. Yes, I, I we should talk yeah. later. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to play it. At the very least, the uh, Japanese uh, left hand and right hand uh, position works. At the very least, those. Right pointing finger, left pointing finger. There we go. <laughs> or, or, or you need to go middle finger. <laughs> so that yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, now we need to go six. If you do one, you have to do two. Mm. Yeah, true. But if you add this gradually, then you don't have backwards compatibility, so you have to choose a backwards compatibility problem. Good point. Uh, there's, isn't there a config variable that you can uh, percent W? Uh, I'm sorry, percent care of W they can use to determine uh, the previous versions or my signal. I thought the percent care of the chip. Oh. I, I know one of those was to set warnings and uh, check for versions, but I but looking at future Unicode sprays, yeah, I'm on time because I don't have people brought up my question here and sign this bill. It also handles these one pieces. <laughs> why, why is baseball white arms for? Because that's what you're the character. I go through the entire ask I go through the entire ask your regime, we set the course of delete and a couple of characters to make sure those work in the test suites. And you can use any white space that you like inside there. And just make sure that it works inside a joint operator and probably turns right, um, probably turns a, the right off tree. Uh, the test suite also runs a join on that term list. I'm sure there are many other ways to break this. I am quite going to come up with options. And some of the more, some of the, uh, more fun alternatives later on because I have yet to do escaping. And yes, uh, stop that. Uh, tab, that's, that's a tab there, by the way. It does handle tabs. Or rather, will, I think I have to code. So tab and then nine for the limiter and inside there. Escape nine. How often you see that outside, outside my expression? You can also make the, the test case more uh, fun to read by using both word in the right part. Oh, well, I have one test case that I wrote uh, that's using uh, QQW space Q, 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 slash Q, backslash Q, backslash Q, Q. No, inside the square brackets on the right. Oh, in here? Right? No, on the right. On the right. It's deeply. No, down, 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 down. Oh, so there, use both oh. word. Instead of quotes. Mm, good point. Just to make it more fun. Right, right. More, more special. <laughs> make it shiny. Make it make, 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 make. Uh, so uh, my chair is in the right side of the room. <laughs> no, it's for one in turn. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, as long as there's. If you're in the test case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It says common theory about this. Yeah, the, the one thing is, in doing this, I found the one test that you said will probably make me rewrite the entire thing to use the property. Now that is QQW colon. The way the keyword parser works, if, if you have QQW colon colon, i.e. colon a null string colon, the keyword parser thinks that this is a package instead of the QQW operator. 
So I need to use apparently the 514. Um, the, there's an advanced version of this in uh, 5. Ah, that's the evil one because in that case the quote should mean the same as the double colon. All right. Right, and if you say QQ double colon, then the HEMA parser does not interpret that correctly. It comes in as a package being called by a colon. But, which is odd because I expect that it has the same behavior on QQW, sorry, on QQW put because of the data package separator. But it doesn't do the same thing. And I think that if I went too deeply into that, then it will be like the this three back into here. And that's just how these go. Um, I am amazed that I'm almost on time here. Um, if you have questions and concerns, uh, this is all up on GitHub under the name um, Dark Four D R F O R R on the tag. Uh, and this new save was on, so I think I will take questions. I'm trying to load the code on GitHub, but in the meanwhile, mm -hmm. you say the keyboard API. <laughs> Which one? Which one? Yeah. Um, whatever, wha whatever is used by functional programmers. Uh, what I did with the code, and um, this may help on another level, is I took the original code oh, for doing these subroutines um, that Doug Wolf wrote uh, for doing okay. subs and stripped out everything I could find that wasn't directly related to the keyboard. What you might find useful is a devil call parser on CPEN, which is likely what's going to be in 5.22. Right. And it's, it's working all the way back to 5.8, and it's so much easier to use okay. than, than this. All right. Very, very useful. Okay. You know, I, I have plenty of time here, so if, if anyone wants to, uh, if, if anyone wants to, uh, Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you.